Okay, dear Matthew, uh, you are most welcome with us today. Can you, give, can you introduce yourself and introduce your business? Yes, um, my name is uh, Matthew Morellis. Uh, I live in Charleston, South Carolina in the United States. Um, and my job and my passion and my career is I am a, a neonatal intensive care nurse and I have been doing that for uh, 25 years, uh, taking care of sick and premature infants. Okay, very interesting. Okay, the first question, what is the neonatal intensive care unit? Sure. So um, in hospitals across the world, there are intensive care units that are designed to take care of people who are sicker than usual. Um, the neonatal intensive care unit is geared towards taking care of newborns that are either born sick with an infection or some other problem um, that necessitates them having intensive care. Okay, very good. Okay, next question. What is the physical adjustments uh, that a baby must make outside the, uh, the mother's body? Yes. So the biggest adjustment is with their lungs. So once they're born, they have to clear all that fetal lung fluid that is inside their lungs and make room for the air and the oxygen. So that is the, the biggest change. Uh, some of the other things is their circulation. Um, they get their blood and their oxygen supply primarily through the placenta and the umbilical cord. Um, but once they're born, um, they have to be able to um, circulate that blood on their own and an entirely new circuit within the body because the placenta and the umbilical cord is no longer involved. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say probably the third biggest change is, is they have to, uh, it's called thermogenesis, where they have to produce their own heat um, because um, they have to maintain a normal body temperature, whereas um, the uterus was predominantly, and the mom were predominantly doing that beforehand. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay. okay, which babies need a special care? Big question. <laughs> so I would say uh, primarily um, we see premature babies needing intensive care. Um, that's our predominant patient population. Um, and it, it all depends on how early they're born. So, of course, a baby who is born at 23 or 24 or 25 weeks gestation, they are going to require a lot longer care, a lot longer term care and more intensive care than, say, a baby who was born at 34 weeks. Um, but normally the problems stem with prematurity from immature lungs. So often they will require extra support, whether that be on a ventilator um, or on CPAP or something less invasive like a nasal cannula. Um, but I would say that the lung problems are predominantly what we see with the premature population. Um, but of course, there are other things that go wrong. Um, babies are born with infections that have to be treated with antibiotics. Um, babies are born with malformed parts. Um, babies are born with other malformations that have to come to us as well. Okay. Okay, next question. What maternal factors can lead to children getting in the NICU? Sure. Um, so the more common ones are diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, so moms that have a high blood sugar, when the babies are born, um, they have started to produce all this insulin to fight the, to bring down the blood sugar that the mom had because it's passed through the placenta. Um, so when the baby is born, suddenly they lack all that sugar, but they're still producing all that insulin. And so their blood sugars drop precipitously. And so they will often require um, IV fluids um, to keep their sugars up. Um, some other things, something called preeclampsia, which is a combination of high blood pressure in the mom um, with protein in the urine, lots of swelling, and preeclampsia, especially the high blood pressure component, can lead to decreased um, blood flow through the placenta to the baby. So often you'll end up with a baby who's not getting adequate nutrition. Um, so they're gonna be small for their gestational age. Um, sometimes the high blood pressure can become severe in the mothers and they will develop seizures. Um, and those seizures um, will preclude blood flow to the baby. So the baby will take what we call a hypoxic um, hit or lack of oxygen that can damage all their body systems. Um, and then I would probably say 
Um, less common are uh, sometimes the mom and the baby will have different blood types, which is very common, mm -hmm. but sometimes antibodies from the mom's blood can get into the baby's blood and destroy their red blood cells, leading to jaundice. Um, and sometimes if the jaundice is severe enough, we have to replace their entire blood volume through a series of blood transfusions. Oh. Um, but it's not really, it, it used to be really common, but it's less so nowadays. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, fortunately. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, what delivery factors can lead to neonatals getting into the NICU? Sure. Um, probably the most common and that people are most familiar with or when maybe a baby um, is too big to pass through the birth canal mm -hmm. um, and gets stuck, something that's called a shoulder dystocia. Um, so those babies um, can, what ends up happening is either the cord uh, the umbilical cord gets stuck between the baby and the birth canal, cutting off blood flow to the baby. Mm -hmm. um, so no oxygen to the baby, of course, is bad. Um, then you can have situations where if they're having a hard time getting the baby out, the physician will use forceps to co go up into the birth canal and pull the baby out. Sometimes that results in nerve damage uh, to the baby, uh, especially in the face area. Um, sometimes that can be permanent, sometimes it's just temporary if it's just a bruising of those nerves. Um, and probably the third one I think of is when the umbilical cord delivers before the baby. So the obstetrician would be checking um, to see how dilated she is and finds the umbilical cord there. And so the problem is, of course, when the baby comes down, it compresses the umbilical cord and then the oxygen is cut off from the baby again. So I would say those things. Okay. Okay, what baby factors can lead to neonatals getting into the NICU? So I would say we've covered a lot of them, but uh, to summarize, um, and probably in the order of prevalence, is breathing difficulties. Um, mostly that is a premature issue. Um, as I said, the earlier they are, the longer they will have those breathing difficulties. Um, and that stems from the fact that the babies who are really tiny don't produce um, a lot of surfactant, which is the material in the lung sacs that um, keep the lung sacs from, lung sacs from sticking together mm -hmm. um, and keep them from expanding. Um, there are also, we see malformations of the heart and the blood vessels surrounding the heart. Um, that is another issue that can lead them coming to us. Um, in the bigger hospitals, there might be a unit specifically for those heart babies, um, but in some smaller hospitals, um, then the NICU would take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, jaundice and hyperbilirubinemia, same thing. Um, if the jaundice level gets too high, it can lead to a problem called kernicteris, which is um, damage to the brain caused by the bilirubin. Um, so we'd like to keep that down by providing blue lights on the baby that breaks down the bilirubin in the skin. Um, low blood sugars, of course, as I mentioned before, will bring a baby to us so that they can get IV fluid. Um, and just in general, prematurity and all the things that go with it, because obviously the little preemies can't eat, they have to be given food through a tube, et cetera. Okay, so let's move to the NICU. Uh, what, what do these people do? Neonatologists. Yes. Sure. Um, so the neonatologist. Oh, okay. is, Let me say it once more. Neo sure. neonatologists. <laughs> yes. Neonatologist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah no problem. So the neonatologist um, is usually the is the head physician of the NICU. Um, in the NICU that I work at, we have 80 beds. Um, and so we always have two neonatologists working at the same time during the daytime um, and one neonatologist working at night. They lead what we call doctor's rounds. So every day um, the babies are split into different teams mm -hmm. um, and one team would be led by a neonatologist. Um, and there would also be a lot of other people on the team that we'll probably cover here in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but the neonatologist makes the plan of care for each baby in the unit every day, sets the goals that are gonna be met. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, the second one, a neonatal fellow. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the neonatal fellow is one step below a neonatologist. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a neonatal fellow is a pediatrician um, who is training to become um, a neonatologist. Mm -hmm. So it is a three-year process. Um, so once they graduate from their residency of pediatricians, then they, they decide they want to um, and then, you know, they might get one offer, they might get two or three, mm -hmm. and then they have to decide where they want to go to train. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, the, the next one, the pediat pediatric uh, resident. Okay. So mm -hmm. the pediatric resident um, is a physician who has graduated medical school, um, has decided they want to be a pediatrician, um, and so now they are in a residency that usually lasts four years, mm -hmm. um, and they go and work in the different units throughout the hospital that deal with children mm -hmm. so that you can get a really broad exposure to all the different kinds of specialties. And so they also come through the NICU um, and they spend um, and it, usually about six months with us. And uh, so they learn how to take care of babies and sick babies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next one, the neonatal nurse uh, practitioner. Sure. So, um, Neonatal nurse practitioners are registered nurses um, who have their bachelor's degree, who have decided they want to um, be a provider um, in the NICU. And the uh, neonatal nurse practitioners are very specific. Um, you usually only see them working in uh, neonatal intensive care units. Um, occasionally, you'll see them out in town working for pediatricians, but primarily you'll find them in the NICU. Um, and they have gone back to school and it used to be they would just they would get their master's degree, so spend two years studying the intricacies of sick uh, newborns. Um, but now, um, in a couple years, it's going to be a requirement that they have their doctorate. Um, so most people who are going back to school now to be neonatal nurse practitioners are getting their doctorate. Um, and basically, they are providers in the unit. They are part of that care team under the neonatologist. Um, so th they are assigned anywhere from six to eight babies, um, and their job is to um, present the case of each baby to the neonatologist, and then in collaboration, they come up with that plan that I told you about mm -hmm. um, to take care of that baby for the day. Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, uh, respiratory uh, therapist. Yes, um, so respiratory therapist. Um, in our NICU, um, there's usually uh, four working during the daytime and two to three working at night. Um, they are, um, they have usually gone to a two, two year school um, in a, usually like a community college or a technical college. Mm -hmm. um, and their job is to run all the respiratory therapy equipment that we use. So they are in charge of managing the ventilators, um, the CPAP machines, um, they are responsible when babies are delivered. They are in charge of taking care of that baby's uh, um, breathing and airway. Um, uh, they are required to be able to intubate, um, so put the breathing tube down inside the baby. Um, and so they are in charge of doing all the respiratory treatments, mm -hmm. um, breathing treatments, uh, chest physiotherapy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, the physical, occupational, and the speech uh, therapists. Yeah, so um, we see, we use them a lot in our unit, and you usually see them in the bigger units, the bigger neonatal intensive care units. The speech therapists are especially important because um, they are really responsible for introducing those first um, bottle feedings to the premature babies because they... I mean, they're very disorganized. The little babies are very disorganized. They don't know how to coordinate sucking, swallowing, and breathing all at the same time so that they can take in nutrition through their mouth. So the speech therapist will usually work with these premature babies once a day and offer them the bottle. And then they have very specialized techniques. They're almost all um, have their doctorates um, and they help these babies learn to eat. And so they're very important. Yeah. Um, the occupational therapist, premature babies will often have um, muscular issues. Um, 
Some of them will be what we call hypertonic. So their arms and their legs are super tight. And so they need to be able to relax those muscles um, to be, be able to use their full range of motion. And so the occupational and physical therapist will come in and help with that. Yeah, okay. Okay, then the next group, uh, dietitians. Yep, so we have um, usually two dietitians working during the daytime and they primarily function during the rounds that I talked about. So when the doctors and the whole team get together and talk about the babies, there is a dietitian there and they usually split up the babies half and half. Um, and they come up um, the, with the neonatologist, a nutrition plan. So for instance, if the baby, they see a baby who is not gaining weight adequately, they will suggest how to increase the caloric or calorie intake for that baby so that they gain weight appropriately. Um, and they also, um, um, well, that's that. Yeah, that's it. That's probably the primary okay. job they have. Uh, the next group, uh, lactation consultants. Yes. So the lactation consultants have really come into the forefront uh, in the NICU environment mm -hmm. and, and generally in the hospital environment in the last, I would say, five to 10 years. Um, before that, you really wouldn't hear a lot about them, um, but now they're super important as we've discovered that breast milk um, provides um, so much better nutrition um, to the babies than formula. Um, the big thing about breastfeeding is it provides a, a, a strong bond between the mother and the baby as well, yeah. and the breast milk provides a lot of immune factors from the mom that they pass on to the baby to strengthen the baby's immune system. So, um, so it's really, they, their role is really big. You, you'll see them throughout the hospital working in postpartum, um, even in labor and delivery right after birth. And then of course in the NICU, um, helping our moms when they're able, when the babies are big enough to breastfeed, um, they come in and assist them with it. Okay, very good. Next group, uh, pharmacists. Yeah, well, we all know that's a super important job. Um, so we also have two pharmacists involved um, every day during the daytime. And of course there's pharmacists in the, in the hospital, of course, 24 seven, but the, there are pharmacists specific to the NICU who are there every day for rounds. Um, and they assist with making sure that the baby's uh, doses of medications are all appropriate. Um, that there, if there's a better medication than the one that's being used, they will make those suggestions. Um, and just as importantly, the babies who are un unable to eat and rely on IV nutrition, they come up with the, um, the solution that is used in those bags of IV fluid that provide all the nutrition for the baby. Um, so their job is super important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, next people, uh, social workers. Yes. So our social workers um, are usually masters prepared. Um, there is never enough of them. I consider it a uh, I consider it a thankless job because they have to deal with a lot of very delicate social situations. Um, you know, babies who are born to a mom who abused drugs, um, babies who are taking taken from the custody of their parents uh, due to a history of abuse. Um, so those are very difficult situations that they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and they rely on really good communication skills um, to, to deal with those families. Um, but then on the brighter side, they're also used to provide um, social resources that are out in the community. So we have a lot of babies and families that come from um, a long way away from us because we are like one of the biggest units in our state and so babies can come to us from anywhere um, within four or five hundred miles to mm -hmm. to be cared for and so those parents might need support when they go home and the social workers are in charge of finding out what resources um, in their where they live and providing them um, contacts so that they can use those resources to help care for their newborn once they go home. So they, they have some good parts to their job and some very difficult parts. Okay, okay the last group, the uh, hospital uh, chaplains. Yes, um, so I, um, I have a uh, little story about that. Mm -hmm. um, I love the hospital chaplains. 
Um, we there is um, one on duty for the children's hospital and one for the adult hospital at all times. Um, they are all faiths. Um, and it just depends on the day who is covering that day to which faith um, um, that that person adheres to, but they are there for everybody. And um, one situation that stands out in my mind is um, probably about 10 years ago, I had a baby who suddenly and unexpectedly passed away while I was caring for him. And the mom had just delivered not even an hour ago and so we rushed to get that mama upstairs uh, before the baby passed away so that she could say goodbye. And of course, at the same time, we called the chaplain. Um, we always try to have them there in those situations. And he came up and he was amazing. The support he provided that family and the comfort that he provided that family at a devastating time in their lives. Um, and then after all was said and done, um, he came up to me and he pulled me aside and made sure I was okay. And he allowed me to talk to him um, about what I was feeling. And I just find the chaplains are just one of the most essential parts um, of the whole process. Yeah, okay, that's really, really interesting. Okay, th that's the question. As a human, what did you learn from the neonatal intensive care unit? Oh, <laughs> um, so it's a, it's, my my path to the NICU was not something that was um, planned out. Um, I kind of fell into this job as a new nurse. Um, I never even expected to be a nurse when I was growing up. It just happened that it was a opportunity that was provided to me um, where um, my uh, I was in the military before and they um, offered me the chance to become a nurse um, and pay for my entire education. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, I took that, I took that up because nobody likes debt. Um, so I, I let them pay for my education. And then when I went to my first military hospital to work, um, most uh, guys, most um, men do emergency room, um, adult intensive care. Uh, and that's what I asked for, but it was not available. Okay. And uh, they said there was an opening in neonatal intensive care. And I said, sure, why not? I'll try it. Um, <laughs> and so I, it turns out it was what I was meant to do. I love every minute of it. Um, I love my favorite part. And you, and you spoke to the humanity of it. Mm -hmm. My favorite part of it is meeting that family of that baby for the very first time when they come in into an environment that is very overwhelming, monitors beeping, equipment beeping, their baby is connected to all sorts of equipment, and it's just a very not what people picture when they get pregnant and they expect mm -hmm. to deliver a healthy baby. Okay. So my favorite part and the most human part of it is meeting that family as they come in the door and making them comfortable as they can be in this situation and feeling hope and knowing that, that that baby is in the best place that he or she can be at that moment mm -hmm. um, to provide the best care so that eventually they can go home and be part of that family that they dreamed about when they first got pregnant. That's yeah. the best part. Yeah, okay. That's, that's really very informative and very interesting. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.